lot of people have been asking me to do guides on specific builds, and I'm happy to oblige. Today, we'll talk about the most difficult of the reptile builds, the snake. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure why you'd ever want to try the snake build. Snakes are, in general, low tier, averaging in the D plus range. Not only that, but their gameplay is some of the most difficult content you'll ever experience. If you ask me, it's a little silly to use so many points to spec into the reptile faction and then opt to not have legs. With that said, even though most snake builds are low tier, if you really know what you're doing, you can make one of the most formidable builds possible. Today, we'll go over the most viable options as well as common mistakes many snake players make. You have to be careful since there are a lot of enticing skills that can end up wasting a perfectly good build in the long run. Let's begin by discussing the main traits, strengths, and weaknesses of your snake build. As previously stated, the most defining trait is opting to not give your character legs. This has a few benefits. It opens up a lot of unique movement options like slithering, sliding, sidewinding, and even gliding in some cases. Access to secret areas of the map normally blocked off by tight access points become available to snakes. This can net more exclusive access to food, shortcuts, and escape routes. In my opinion, this doesn't fully negate the negatives of having no legs, but credit where credit is due, it's not the worst trade. But how can you maximize the evolution points you gain by dropping legs as a spec? Well, there are a lot of interesting options. Advanced tracking abilities, extremely potent venom, climbing, camouflage, the ability to traverse ocean, ability to scale walls, feign death, produce musk, the list goes on. But before you get too fascinated by the abilities of the snake class, be warned. There are only three competitively viable snake builds in the current meta. The rest, I'm sorry to say, are pretty unremarkable and no doubt low tier. Even the official game wiki refers to the typical most popular snake builds as a garbage group. So if you take anything away from this video, understand that vanilla snake builds are not worth your time. But I'm getting sidetracked. Let me get back to the three viable builds. I'll go through them one at a time, from worst to best, as well as the special characteristics that make them so strong, and any shortcomings they may have. The first viable snake build is the Constrictor. This includes boas, pythons, and anacondas. It's the only snake build classified as a tank, with high HP and a thick, scaly hide. But more important than the snake's defense is its unparalleled grab game. A well-specced Constrictor build can zero to death any player they manage to grab. If we compare the Constrictor's grab to other high-level grabs, we can see that it sits among the best grabs in the game. Now, the Constrictor build is not perfect by any means. It's not low tier, but I'd say it maxes out around the bottom of B tier, for a few reasons. Constrictor snakes are huge, and this comes at a cost to speed. Because of that, they need the element of surprise to secure a grab. The problem with that is, again, they're huge, so it's not easy to hide. And secondly, Constrictors are a tank build, but completely lack the ability to deal with groups of enemies. Sure, they're pretty overpowered in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but a fully executed grab combo takes a long time to perform, making it impossible to fight a group of hostiles, and will quickly be overwhelmed by a coordinated assault. Not much else to say about this build, so let's move on to number two. The second most viable build is the Pit Viper. Unlike the Constrictor build, and also unlike most other garbage tier snakes, the Pit Viper class specs pretty deeply into the Venom Tree. But Tirzu, I hear you say. Didn't you rip on Poison Dart Frogs for doing that? No, unlike the Poison Tree, the Venom Tree is absolutely worth diving into. Poison is valuable for defense up to a certain point, but the thing to keep in mind is that you're always going to be at a negative if you actually have to use it, because for its effect to activate, you actually need to take a significant hit. Venom, on the other hand, is an offensive tool, which can allow its wielder to score kills much easier or defeat opponents that would otherwise be way out of their league. More powerful Venom effects only make you a more dangerous opponent, something to fear instead of something to avoid. Anyways, Vipers are generally defined as having specced into two main abilities. The first is their Venom. The Venom tree is pretty diverse with a lot of interesting effects, but the Pit Viper build chooses two of the most important effects available, hemorrhagic toxin and tracking compounds. The typical strategy of a Pit Viper player is to sit and wait for a target, which is aided by their high level camouflage, and to score a single hit before retreating. Hemorrhagic Toxin is not a fast-acting Venom type, but has extremely high raw damage over time. 
With that in mind, the second effect of the Pit Viper Venom comes into play. One being very low base, HP, and defense. Intimidation and stealth are really the only things preventing you from getting killed. So if a player with high resolve detects you, there's not much that can save you. Remember, this class has slow acting venom, so it won't be able to kill something before it has the chance to kill you, or at least do some serious damage. All in all though, great build. Unique, fun, and powerful. I'd place them at the bottom of A tier. And finally, the best, most well-optimized snake build. The Cobra. Cobras are pretty similar to the Viper build, but a bit more well-rounded. While Vipers are more effective at stealth and critical strikes, Cobras are just an all-around more powerful class, excelling at both offense and defense, with a few unique abilities of their own. They are larger and therefore less stealthy, but bulkier and more heavily armored. And they also spec into the Venom Tree in a different way that I believe is more well optimized for versatility. The Venom of a Cobra is different than that of a Viper, in that while a Viper Bite causes hemorrhaging, Cobras carry a potent Neurotoxin. Neurotoxins are much faster acting than hemorrhagic toxins because they quickly induce paralysis, which results in suffocation instead of waiting for the victim to die from internal bleeding. This is important because it means a Cobra Bite is much more effective as a defensive weapon as well as an offensive one. Cobra players rarely need to actually bite in self-defense anyway though, since they possess one of the most effective intimidate moves in all of outside. A combo of flaring their cape and hissing, enough to drop almost any aggressor's resolve to zero. However, if this fails, a few advanced Cobra players have unlocked an extremely rare method of self-defense, a tactic which allows the player to deal damage while not putting themselves at risk, a ranged attack. The ability to deal damage and status effects over a distance is extremely powerful and has only been unlocked a few times in the entire player base. The Cobra's ranged attack inflicts permanent blindness if it connects, rendering its target effectively helpless and doomed. The combo of versatile venom, excellent defensive options, and daunting intimidation effects puts the Cobra class in high A tier. So in summary, the three best snake classes are Constrictor, Pit Viper, and Cobra, each with unique traits that allow them to surpass the normal limits of what snake builds can do. Thank you for watching, and if you've got a build, playstyle, biome, or any other aspect of the meta that you'd like me to analyze, leave it in the comments.